Hello, I'm Foon and I write the website hustlecastle.site. We had a big game update yesterday. There's a new type of item, totems. There are two new ancient sets. Rooms can be upgraded, a few other small changes, and there were announcements about events too. I'm going to go through all the changes, but first some more personal announcements. My clan, Stax, is recruiting. We have five spots. One guy had a baby, two decided that the game was just time consuming, and two left us for Eternals, which is fine. I'm just kidding. Anytime we're matching more with a top five clan, it's always a drag, but at least with them, we know we're going to have some laughs and more chat. I like them very much. So we do have a bit of space. We're a TR11 clan. You don't have to be quote unquote end game. More important that you're actively improving. We all really support each other in stacks and help each other improve. We have some amazing players with us, all great people for discussing gear choices or emerging trends or just generally geeking out with. And if I can say so myself as deputy, we keep things running really smoothly. Fantastic warlords covering all time zones. And if being a warlord is something you want, the bar is high, but it's not based on seniority. We pick warlords based on who is most active and likely to use those added game permissions to the benefit of the clan. One more announcement. In my last video, I launched a merch store. I'm now selling a line of mugs based on the currencies in the game. I found an artist with a cartoon video game style and commissioned the design. These are not just screenshots taken from the game. They're high resolution and designed to be mugs. I'm honestly very happy with how they came out and love the ones I have as real physical things in my home from the game I spent so much of my time playing. There was a problem with how I had the store set up and people outside the US were seeing insane shipping fees. I fixed that, so if you wanted to buy and ran into that, please do try again. And a big, big thank you to those who have made a purchase. That really helps me justify taking half a day off of work to make a video. And hopefully you enjoy having a real thing more than just making a donation to a Buy Me A Coffee page. Okay, I think we can get started now. Let's start with the new sets, since I'd already seen these leaked and have some opinions ready. Many of you might have seen these show up in your ancient crafting room and then shortly after disappear. I didn't see that, but at least some iPhone users had that experience. They were also leaked. Leaks came out for a lot of this new stuff, and then within a day, HC officially announced it all as coming soon. So I wonder if the game makers are trying to keep a little more control over announcements. Though if I were them, I would encourage leaks. It adds all this drama and anticipation over what's really just a software update. Okay, so we have a tank with daggers and a mage with a staff. They summarize them in the announcement as, The Blade King is a warrior equipped with daggers and plenty of armor. He casts debuffs within an area around himself, and he can instantly kill an enemy. The Ice Angler is a mage equipped with a staff who freezes enemies on the battlefield and is immune to certain debuffs. Right away, I love daggers. Daggers are the fastest weapon, doing two hits per second, or half a second per hit if you prefer. Compare that to an axe, which needs two seconds for each attack. If you know how base weapon damage and damage stat bonuses work, then you know that means each damage gem, elixir, or whatever, you add to a fighter with daggers will give four times the amount of damage per second compared to giving that same damage bonus to a fighter with an axe. And if you don't know how base weapon damage and damage bonuses work, I will link my damage explainer video and relevant page on hustlecastle.site in the description below. Also with the fast weapon speed, you have all these extra hits that can potentially trigger another ability. Here are some examples. These Sir Quaxlot daggers, 13% isn't high, and that only goes to 14% if crafted ancient, but that 13 to 14% roll of the dice is happening twice a second all about along. This Sakura Blessing Ring that the ability triggers on attack, these will all trigger in three seconds on daggers, just one, two, three. Compare that to a crossbow that's a slow type that takes one and one third seconds for each attack. That's 1.3 times six attacks, which is eight seconds to trigger all three effects. And the souls are all really good when the attacks are fast. I like this one that increases damage with each hit. This is an arena soul I picked up just to have, and I'm glad I did. But even if you have the more common each attack has a 25% chance to increase damage for 10 seconds, that's going to virtually always be in effect with a 25% dice roll happening twice a second. Or the same thing to reduce armor, that would be great against bosses. Or the stun one is also looking nice to me. Statistically, your target's going to be stunned half the time. Basically, a lot of good gear gets even better with a fast attack speed. This is a tank set that also uses tank armor, which is great. Most of the high damage sets use archer armor, which leaves us balancing wanting a high damage ancient set at 6 out of 6 versus just the 4 out of 6 abilities and giving them tank armor so that they stay alive. The theory in that is even though the damage per second is lower, they are alive from more of the battle and hopefully end up doing more damage in the end. So this set is already using tank armor, so no need to worry about that. And I would really assume that even without the damage bonus of archer armor, like Legionnaire and Shadow or any of the actual archer sets, we will still see great damage output from the set's 6 out of 6 abilities and the fact that it's daggers. But I'm looking forward to see it in action for sure. This does feel a lot like what we all assumed Nameless King would be, a sturdier high damage tank. As far as I know, Nameless King replaced a lot of 8-man second Legionnaires, but in 6 and 7-man, it never really pulled ahead enough to earn a place in most squads. Let's read the ability. With two items, 
Once in a while, the unit performs a circular attack, dealing 30,000 physical damage to all enemies around themselves. Okay? With four, once in a while, the unit performs a circular attack, dealing 50,000 physical damage to all enemies around themselves and stripping them of their armor. The affected enemies lose 50% of their armor stats and are unable to use their armor abilities for one and a half seconds. The unit deals an extra 10,000 physical damage to the enemies that have been stripped of their armor or weapons. Once in a while, the unit throws a dagger at a random enemy. The dagger deals 65% of the unit's attack damage. And the six items, which is I think what most people would want with a tank, uh, with the tanky tank. Once in a while, the unit performs a circular attack, dealing 80,000 physical damage to all enemies around themselves and stripping them of their armor. The affected enemies lose 60% of their armor stats and are unable to use armor abilities for two seconds. Also, those enemies take 100,000 damage that ignores their armor over five seconds. Uh, that's great, 100,000 direct damage. The unit deals an extra 25,000 physical damage to the enemies that have been stripped of their armor or weapons. Once in a while, the unit throws five daggers at random enemies. Each dagger deals 85% of the unit's attack damage. Each subsequent dagger deals 10% more damage. When hit, the enemies have a 50% chance of having all buffs removed. Great. Every 14 seconds, the unit deals a crushing blow to an enemy, inflicting 600% of the attack damage. That damage ignores the target's armor. Also, the unit is granted a shield whose durability equals the damage done. The shield lasts for 3 seconds. If the enemy has less than 20% health left after the attack, they are killed. If the unit is killed by the crushing blow, the unit's ability cooldown time is reduced by 6 seconds. So, um, all that sounds really great. Obviously, everyone's excited about that insta-kill ability at the end. I hadn't even noticed about removing all buffs. That's really what I love most about my cultist, so that's really cool. Now, some of these are using the fighter's base weapon attack. This is the downside of dagger's quick weapon speed. Basically, let's do the calculation in reverse. Let's say you have a fighter with daggers and a fighter with an axe, and both have 100 DPS. That's damage per second. Reverse the math from before. What's the damage per attack? For the axe, it's 200 damage per attack. For the daggers, it's 50 damage per attack. Since the axe hits once every two seconds and the daggers once every half second, here that four times difference means one fourth the damage per attack. But I think that's worth understanding, but it's not going to make much of a difference. This is just those extra damage attacks, which is just one of the set's abilities. That shield mentioned is also based on this, so perhaps that's not going to be a particularly great shield, but he's in tank armor, so he's going to be okay. So again, I think this sounds great. At least it all sounds great. I don't have this set yet, and I haven't seen one in battle yet. I'm sure there will be an offer to buy them soon. And interesting, there's no purchase limit in the arena store for materials, so players with lots of badges, as well as mythal chests, could already have it. Anyway, in Hustle Castle, descriptions only get you halfway. What's really, really good often comes down to cooldown times and other factors that are hard to quantify. But I'll say this sounds awesome and I will be starting one. At least I'll start gathering materials. Maybe I'll get lucky and get the cheap offer. I refuse to spend $100 in one shot on the game, so I'll just have to see how lucky I am. And if I'm not lucky, I'll just build it the old-fashioned way by earning badges rather than paying for it. Now the mage, the ice angler. The first thing that stands out to me with the set is that the 2 out of 6 ability sounds like it's not complete shit. Most of the sets, particularly the mage sets, are a bit shit at 2 out of 6. This matters because it is absolutely still meta to have a tank mage who can be one of the last standing and res your team. The two most common choices are 4 out of 6 mage with 2 out of 6 eclipse armor and soul, or a 2 out of 6 mage with a 4 out of 6 paladin armor and jewelry. 4 out of 6 paladin was nerfed pretty hard in September 2021. There was a period where it was debatable if it was still meta, but now I think it's been clearly established that it still must have to have one 4 out of 6 palette in the team, especially since the main relic currently in vogue is the hammer, which stuns. The magey part of the tank mage is most commonly Darkula, probably the current best 2 out of 6 mage set, or Illusionist just to have a place for the alien scepter, possibly the best mage weapon in game, maybe tied with Dino Wand. My prediction, based on just the description, which as I've said, descriptions can be misleading, is that this new set could be a really nice option for a tank mage. This is a wand set. The old wand sets are Priest, which is useless, sorry to those who are working on one. If you want a healer, Darkula is better. Or Incinerator, also called Ash, but I try to use official names in videos. Incinerator was the best set in the game before Dragonborn was introduced, and I've yet to see an amazing squad that doesn't have a Dino 1 Incinerator. However, I'm going to predict that we'll see at least some try out dropping Incinerator and putting the Dino 1 on a tank mage with this new set. I would be trying that myself, but I think I'll be able to see how it works for others before I even have the materials. 
it will be interesting. On one hand, Incinerator is a great set and the res block is hard to imagine living without. On the other hand, there's so many good sets right now and we only have so many spots in our squads. We're all looking for ways to squeeze in the best of everything. It is looking like the game developers are going to keep making new sets that are better than the old. So that makes me predicting that these sets will be good, a safe bet. Though I will say the six out of six doesn't wow me. Not like when I read six out of six cultists, how I just immediately wanted to have it. But who knows? Everyone agreed Reaver doesn't sound very good on paper. But now that more people have them, especially in war, squads with them are looking so strong. So I'll say this set looks very good at 2 out of 6. Not impressive on paper for 6 out of 6, but who knows? And it will be interesting to see how a new wand mage affects Incinerator's popularity when there is one wand, Dino, that both sets would be competing over using. It's on my to-do list to OCR. The set descriptions for these on to hustlecastle.site. Also, I'll have to release an update to my role tracking spreadsheet. I'm not sure what the best way to announce when something like that is ready. My own news blog page, Reddit, a YouTube short. If you have an idea where would be a good place to announce something like that, then let me know in a comment, please. I'm curious what would be preferred. Let's move on to totems. These probably deserve their own video. I've started a page on hustlecastle.site, link on the screen as well as in the video description, but let's at least look them over for now. So our fighters have a new item slot. All fighter training levels have it, and it's not locked like souls. It says we build totems with wood and spirits, and we buy spirits from the arena store. Now, that gives me a bit of dread. There is already so much, too much good stuff in the arena store. There's a ton you need to buy when you're new tier 11. And even when you have 99% of that, you want to rebuy items for better gem slot rolls. You want tombs. Maybe you want the skins. And there's also new arena gear released in the past months, plus new souls added with this update too. And now, as of today, there are two sets that are probably both going to be good, that the materials need to be bought in the arena, and spears and totems need to be bought there as well. So I guess I'm back to grinding for arena badges, like when I was a new TR-11. I want to tell myself it will be easier this time. I'm almost always on the podium, but I'm not going to be the only one grinding for arena badges. This will wake the sleeping giants to do the same. So I'm a bit scared that I'm going to be back to the painful early TR-11 grinding the arena for badges, getting destroyed in every tournament, and just hating it stage, but really, really hope not. Okay, let's do this. It's my responsibility as a content creator to blindly go in and possibly make mistakes so you, the loyal viewers, don't have to. Okay, so the arena store, there's materials for the new sets, there's totems and spirits. Nothing else new. Two legendary totems, gonna want both of those, I think. Okay, number one is a cat totem. I like cats. The unit has a 30% chance of dealing an extra 65,000 damage that ignores the target's armor. Sounds great. And the stat bonuses, also pretty good. Magic Pierce is only good on a mage, but nothing is perfect. Number two, another cat. Once in a while, the unit has 75% health restored. They have a 100% chance of having their max health increased by 57,600 for five seconds. I also really like the sound of that. Magic damage is a bit useless and it doesn't combine well with crit, but I'll worry about that later. Let's go play with them. Oh wait, I'm going to need some spirits. I'll just buy all of these, I think. Okay, now I'm ready. Am I? Should I get a purple totem too? Okay, I'll get one for you guys. No ability at all. Hmm, buying a purple was possibly a mistake, but I'm not gonna cry over it. Let's show the team their new accessories. If I tap the totem slot, it opens the jewelry and artifact tab. That's a crowded space. Are they there? They must be. Found them. That unique shape helps. Ah, uh, Sage has some advice for us. My lord, you can now use a new type of item, the totem. Its main feature is that it can be enhanced by being imbued with spirits. Uh, fun fact, I also get enhanced when imbued with spirits. Tap the increase button if you insist, Sage. You will need wood and spirits to enhance the totem. Spirits are obtainable in the arena. By merging wood and spirits, your totem will get more powerful and grant your unit extra stats. Tap the increase button to merge them in a totem. All right. Legendary totems hold unique ability that can be unlocked when enhanced. Okay, so confirm that it's just the orange legendary totems that have an ability. When you dismantle the totem, you will get some of the spirits you imbued the totem with. You can use them again to enhance another totem. All right, he's gone. Okay, so here's our enhanced screen. Some buttons to max out my spirits. That's too much, or wood. Should I do it? Hmm, I'm gonna play around just a bit more before finishing my whole week's worth of spirits. Get more spirits? With diamonds, no thank you. 
Let's give this to someone. Uh, they're both pretty good. I think I'll give my Lego the one that ignores armor. Lego's attacking maybe the opposing EOL, who has a lot of armor, so that seems like a good fit. The healing one, that would be good on Darkula, but I don't have one in the main squad right now. Hmm, everyone likes healing. Wait, let's look at this thing. Okay, so the ability unlocks at level 30. So right now it's just these little stat bonuses. If I level it up, it does not increase the numbers on the ability, just the stats. Though this is for level 30, it's possible it would increase between levels 31 and 40. But I feel like it looks like it'll stay like this. Let's just throw this on EOL. I want to look at that purple one. Now I'm just looking for any buttons with info. Okay, here is something. Leveling up increases the stats. Yes, we know that. Every four levels, there is either a bonus boost or a whole extra stat will be added up to four stats. I was reading Hustle Prime earlier. It sounds like all the orange totems come with four stats already. So this is for purple and blue totems. And honestly, I see no reason to buy anything but orange totems. Those abilities are better than four random mismatched stat bonuses. Any info button hidden under my screen recording app? No. Okay, so in conclusion on totems, buy your two orange totems and all the spirits from the arena store. Don't bother with totems below orange. My purple totem gives back 11 purple spirits if I break it, so that's not worth buying just to break it for spirits. If you are short on arena badges, prioritize spirits over totems. My advice is don't level up any totem right now. Even all the spirits in the store we saw only got my totem to level 13 out of 40. The ability unlocks at level 30. Next week, do the same purchases. Now, that still won't be enough spirits to get one totem to level 30, but hopefully three weeks will be enough. But you can check that easily. And if it's not, just keep going. Once you have enough spirits to get one totem to level 30, pick the best ability of all the totems you have at that point and get that one to level 30. Exactly level 30 and stop enhancing. It looks like the abilities are what we want and the stat bonuses are just that, a bonus. So I'm going to keep selling out the store on spirits, which seems like the more limiting factor, and try to keep buying two totems a week, but totems will start piling up pretty fast. Other than the fact that this uses arena badges, this looks pretty cool. I like that it's gear and so easy to move around. It will take some time to get all my squad in totems with unlocked abilities, but that's the point. It's not supposed to finish immediately. I've started a list of all the different abilities I've seen people share, and I'll run some numbers on spirits at some point soon and get all that info in the totem page on site, and probably a whole video about totems too. But I think for now, there's nothing to do but buy up and save spirits. I also messaged QC Runner's Discord server to find out if any of the other Nord games have a feature like totems already. They say no. The man, the legend himself, saw the conversation, so it seems we are first. QC Runner, if you don't know, is another content creator. I really like his Hustle Castle videos. He covers all the Nord games, which gives him a unique perspective, and he has a Discord server too. Nice place. So the arena is getting a Champions League. We've all seen the button by now. This is widely expected to be an arena equivalent to the Pirate League. And I hate to admit it, but I think I'll be spending that extra $5 a month for it. There's totems and the new sets, new armor, weapons, and artifacts were introduced not too long ago. And with this big update, the announcement also said the arena store now has new souls. Now, the best armor and weapons are generally event items, but the best souls are arena souls. So I'm certainly interested in what these will be, and that's another thing I'll be wanting to spend badges on. Moving on, there were some other announcements. The game will see new monthly events that will be launched on May 1st. Subsequently, new seasons with unique rewards will begin every month. The Royal Challenge, by earning towers in various activities and by completing weekly quests, you will be able to get various additional rewards. The Champions League, an arena event, earn helmets by fighting in tournaments and winning. Get extra rewards to increase your squad's power. Now, the formatting here implies that the game developers consider the Champions League and Pirate League to be events. That's consistent with them calling the purchase a pass and also those not counting as a purchase when you're trying to not spend money to get the $10 ancient offer. I interpret this to mean that these will have monthly seasons that reset on the first of each month and that's also when we can expect the Champions League to open up May 1st this Sunday. The Royal Challenge, I don't know what that is, kind of sounds something like a challenge event just built into the game. If I could have any event just built into the game, I would want Hammer, but of course anyone would, though I'm just guessing here. Earning towers in various activities, that sounds like a challenge event with towers rather than the crowns. We'll just have to see. The other big change is that the storage rooms can now be upgraded. I'm very happy about this. For me in Italy, the standard maintenance time is right as my morning alarm goes off. And even though I tell myself it's just apples, it's not so important, it drives me crazy to know that I have apples overflowing and going rotten. With this new capacity, I should virtually never have overflowing apples again, which is really nice. Also for mana, sometimes I need a lot of mana, but it's also in bursts, so higher capacity will be great. The others I will have to upgrade anyway in order to upgrade apple storage. Specifically, it 
it needs to go gold. And once gold is finished, wood, then iron, and then I'll have capacity to do apples and mana. I've been saving red resource sharing chests exactly with construction in mind. So it's just a matter of waiting for each to finish so I can start the next. Hopefully many of you are also in a position with lots of chests ready. The lighthouse got a few updates too. First off, the chests here reset weekly now rather than daily. This is in the update announcement. Time for accumulating lanterns and obtaining elixir chests from the lighthouse increased from one to seven days. And I think this is an obvious improvement. Resetting every day meant that before bed, I needed to look at where I was and decide if I was really close to the next chest, if I wanted to try for it, or just let those lanterns be lost. And there's already way too much about the game that I'm checking just before bed, and that all just feels like work, so I'm happy to have one thing gone. Also, they're adding both types of freebies, the ones you just collect every 12 hours and the two ads for lanterns like all the other stores. I'm not going to complain about freebies, though for those keeping count, that's two ads each day for Arena, Djembe, Dungeon, Wood now probably, Mana, Apples, Mithril, Gold, and now Lighthouse, plus six for daily quests. That's 24 ads a day, more if there's the portal, an event, or to speed training. That's insane. It's weird to me how I'm so fine with it. I sort of view ads like fishing in World of Warcraft, but 30 so ads a day is insane, and it's worth pointing out each time the number grows. There also seem to be easier opponents now. Let's actually play the game a little together. I'll clear this set of five. Now, if I take a fighter out of my barracks, the amount of lanterns rewarded is increased. I think I can beat this guy with two fighters out. Normally, I don't bother. For just a few lanterns more, it isn't worth the trouble, but I'll do it now to show the difference. The last one I can probably beat with just four fighters. Okay, cleared. And this I noticed during the last event, if you clear your whole lighthouse, this set of five is automatically reset now, and there's not even a timer on the reset button. That's a nice bonus for those who can beat all five, because then if you don't think you can beat the hardest of your new set of five, you can instantly reset it again. Or if you're using diamonds to buy attacks and you can beat all five, then you can keep going without that extra 15 diamonds to reset the set of five. Okay, now to fix my squad. This is part of why I don't bother taking fighters out for a few extra lanterns. I have to reset my alliances, and it's just so tedious how many taps this takes. I'm not going to do this every hour when I clear my lighthouse. One more thing, the next event. The leaks for the next event are out, so I'll be making another video for those as soon as possible. It's a rune event. The new runes are for amulets, plus a new shooting star artifact. So to see when that video is ready, please subscribe. Okay, I think we have been together long enough and it's time to say goodbye for today. We covered new arena sets, totems and spirits, the arena store and champions league, updates to the lighthouse, upgrading the storage rooms, Next event will be amulet runes. It was a lot. Big day in Hustle Castle. You can find me on Discord and please do if you or a friend or three are interested in joining Stacks. I'll be actively updating hustlecastle.site with these changes all while drinking coffee or sometimes spirits from my beautiful gold coin mug. Get yours today from store.hustlecastle.site. Always be hustling, right? All right, have a nice day and I will see you all again soon with rune leaks.